All right, guys, so it took a couple days to get this one right, but it feels really good the way that it is right now. And the reason why is because I had a couple things I wanted to work around. Previous version had Xavier Lemons, and I felt like Xavier was a little bit expensive in this deck, where you want a little more utility in around the six provision range. So Margarita played better in its place. I chose Margarita over Deregare just because we could tutor it out with Amphibious. Now, that was one of the big changes. The second one was that I had a Revenant, just a one-off Revenant in the deck last month in one of the four provision slots. I decided to take out the Revenant in this one because we're playing against a lot of Pirates matchups. We're playing against a lot of matchups with Scoitel as well when they have like the Dwarven Skirmishers, all that type of stuff. Easy to get three damage, easy to remove the Kedwani Revenant. It wasn't seeing much value. And, you know, those are a couple things that I cleaned up a little bit. I did try as well for a little while to use a War Chariot, and I found it was a little bit awkward. You know, if we're putting in a card like this, we're probably taking out both of these and downgrading to like a Maxi or something like that. It didn't feel great, so that was one of the other things there. And another thing that I tried for a couple days is an Igni, because Igni feels like the proper thing to do in this meta because everyone's running it. And in this event, I had... At one point, Muzzle taken out for Igni. At another point, I had Heatwave taken out for Igni. I found that neither were good for a couple reasons. We have so much control that I wasn't often left with 20 points on a row to be able to use Igni. And that's a problem, right? So Igni was not really playing for good value here. I think we have to stick to the tried and true Karathi, Heatwave, and Vigo's Muzzle instead of the Igni in this, in this case, right? Now, to go over the overall strategy of this deck, it's to basically remove as much as we can, as fast as we can. We have Siege, Northern Realms, with Stockpile Leader ability. I've seen once or twice this season the Inspired Zeal version, but I'm still convinced that Stockpile generates more points for removal. So I kept it the way it is here. We have Amphibious Assault as an Echo card and a Tutor to tutor out a card nine or less provisions we're looking for our siege engines like the reinforced ballistas the Kara ballistas we can go for an envoy if it means recomping our deck to try and find better stuff for carryover and we can go for the siege tower we cannot tutor out peller or squirrel because they're neutrals they're not northern realms uh, cards you know margarita is something we can take john something we can take full test pride for sure but anything above that cannot be tutored we do rely on top decking better with the century and envoy to help pull into our siege henselt karathi muzzle and radovid but we also have other thinning options beyond that, right? John Natalis helps us thin out. We have the two thinning with the Siege Masters. So I'm finding that when played correctly, we can play most of our deck. We'll only have a couple cards left in the deck at the end of the game. And for me, that's enough um, peace of mind to go and play Amphibious over Oniromancy. If you don't like the idea of Amphibious being something to lean on heavily, you can go and put Oniromancy, but at that point you do lose points in the deck, and I think that it's important to get the extra boost there to help keep the Siege Engines going, and to kind of get the tempo that we need, right? Because the game right now is a very fast game with Renfrey, and, you know, with this whole play, they have really inexpensive thinning options like Renfrey's Gang and stuff like that, so we want to be able to compete with those swings that's why Amphibious just has to stick for me. We have um, the Siege scenario progresses whenever we play a Siege engine. So on the deploy of this, we get the Reinforced Trebuchet. It's a one damage per turn engine. On Chapter 1, when we play our first Siege engine, we're getting a Battering Ram. And then on Chapter 2, we're getting a Bombardment. If possible, it's nice to play a couple Siege engines before we get into Siege because then our Bombardments will hit for more points. What I mean by that is if I take King Henselt and I pull out like a Carabalista or a Full Test Pride and then next turn I go play another one and then maybe I get a Reinforcements and we have three on the board and then I go to proc the scenario twice, by the time our Bombardments hit, we're going to be getting the extra damage from them. You'll see what I mean here. With Bombardments, split four damage randomly between all enemy units. Increase the damage by one for each Siege Engine we control. So if I have five Siege Engines, right, we're going to be getting huge payoffs from the Bombardments. And then 
there's a new, like not a new tag, but a unique tag to uh, the faction called Resupply and basically reduces the cooldown by one whenever we play a Warfare card. So it'll be proccing the Cara Ballista. It'll be proccing on the Reinforced Ballista as well. And, you know, just look out for that keyword, right? Resupply on the full test pride. So it's just a really good way to reduce the cooldowns for those and to get things done quicker. When we reduce the cooldowns on those, we're also getting the boost on the King Hensalt if the units are adjacent to it because of its countdown, right? It's a... Uh, its passive ability with the cooldowns. So we gotta be able to kind of synchronize and play these things properly in order to get the most payoff. But if we do, the payoff's ridiculous and the deck could push for 2-0 against decks that are not very control focused, right? Because all of our engines stick, they have a hard time putting down engines and then we're just wiping the board turn and turn again. So this has been the case. I like Squirrel for a one-off Grave Banish. I like Peller just in case we have to get around Defender. We don't want to use a Heat Wave on one. You know, also if they lock one of our engines, we have the ability to purify it. So just nice little text there. And out of the six games I played, guys, I won five. I'll include all the games for you guys, okay? So again, even in the game that we lost, we came pretty close and that was Assimilate double Renfree. They just got really good Renfree roll last turn they're able to keep card advantage because of the tempo i just want you guys to see where the deck goes wrong as well but don't be discouraged five out of six games are wins that's a really good win rate with the deck so i recommend trying it right it's something different it's something refreshing believe it or not because i'm so tired of seeing the same old decks game after game so i do think that this deck can take you to pro rank i do think that you can do some climbing in pro with it i don't know how far you can go but someone can let me know how far they get now with that being said let's get right into the games guys and if you enjoy the content that you see don't forget to subscribe to the channel we're pushing for 11k subs and i'd love to see the number by the end of the week it'd be really sweet but for now let's get into that i'll see you guys tomorrow with another video and look out for streams coming back because the game works again so see you then all right so first up we got knights royal inspiration leader Okay, that's not a bad hand so far. I want damage, right? Damage is going to be really useful against this. One engine. Winch can probably go early. Two of these is a little bit greedy and slow. Okay, I mean, it is what it is. The draw is like half good, half bad. I'm just trying to decide if I take Hensalt for the Thin. If I take Hensalt and pull into a Caraballista, then Winch is justified. Let's give up now. One, two, three, four, that stops it. It is a soldier for crew. We could just play it, honestly. not go crazy here i'll do yeah we'll do this side and then we can get cooldown on either side right we could put down the reinforced ballista as well and just do that whole thing that way It's either Ballista or we can just go in with the wind or the siege tower. Like, either way, as long as we're putting down a cooldown, that's all that matters. Like, these are probably more valuable late game than these are, which is why. It's just that this has resupply and this doesn't. That's the only objection, really. Why would you... Okay. That feels like a good muzzle to me. But there are so many things we want to take muzzle on, like the resilience play. We're just going to damage it anyways. Here, we'll, we'll do this, because I, I feel like damage makes sense here in this round. They're going to try and set up some late game stuff like the carryover plays, and I don't want that.
Okay, bombardment could be good here. If I can clean some of this up. It's just that bombardment doesn't play for as much. I think I put this down, actually. If I were them, I'd probably want to try and get out of the round soon. That's actually better, because now we get the cooldown. Yeah. It's going to be the best one that we get. Just reset that. Save that. I think I'm supposed to just take one charge. Just because it's another engine we can remove. Henselt's now actually paying off quite well. We get the crew for the armor, so I feel a little bit, a little bit safer about that. Honestly, though, bombardments are going to carry. And when this comes forward, too, it, it shuts down, but then... That's huge. Uh, let's let's turn this one down. Actually, we'll play this now first. Get another siege engine out there. There we go. It just makes this so much better. Okay. So we go into round two. We jam down scenario. We should just be fine. Then winch is kind of good, but I think we can wait on the winch. That's most of the deck. Yeah, like that's fine. Here. Heller is cool if they infuse something, but it, I'm probably just going to take their carryover play if they put down, like, the Vandegrift. Book's really bad, actually. If they give me Tome, I might as well take Reinforcements. Yeah. Let's put this down. Now 
They'll probably look at dueling something, I think. Be a ballista at this point, I guess. And if they click, I'm sure that we click as well. Winch is really valuable here. I'll just heat wave that. Hmm, spawn to play man charge. Maybe not. Here, we'll take that, move it up, we take the damage, we reset it, reset it again. I could take it, I don't think we do. We take that, we take this, we just winch it. Again, put that back, hit that here, we take it, okay, whoops, okay, we got Onslaught coming up here next, which should be a problem, I think. Peller is kind of slow for a pushing round. I don't really love reinforcements, but here. Yeah, it's run free. If I play Carol, they kill it. If I play this, they kill it. If I play this, they kill it with one leader plus Coral. Let's just see what they do. I'm taking that. That's going to be the C's. For sure. They bring that back, it gets ugly here. It just adds armor to the problem, and we don't want so much armor late game, it's gonna be annoying. 25, 10. Let's, uh... Just ping, right? If I'm going to take Amphibious, it's going to be for something like Siege Tower. Which I actually don't mind because we kind of want to go tall early. So that if they have the Mork Vark, they just take the damn thing already. We don't have to worry about it later. I'm not going to kill these off because I want them to potentially run out of space. Ah. Such a good squirrel. We can, uh, we'll just play this now. 23. I'm not going to use leader to get ahead. I think it's not really worth it here. Okay. Let's get rid of this thing. It's kind of annoying, isn't it? Probably the winch here, get a little bit more value out of it. And then... 
We're splitting things up. I don't think I have what it takes to win the round. But we'll see. Like, we kind of have engine superiority here. We got three things going on. I'm just worried about them killing this with a Corsair. And then getting two turns of Cataclysm. It could be a really big problem. We'll see. They're rolling for it right now. They might not get it. Freya's into... Ah, okay. Whatever, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Here. Bombardment. Feels pretty comfortable. I think we could take one leader charge. Sink it for some damage here, and then we just, yeah. Keeps me up by a point. I can't spend everything, but we could spend some things. It'd be kind of nice to take Envoy. At least that's out of the way. They're desperate to get this done. I don't think I have the push here. I think we have to defend the bleed. Morkvarg is a huge commitment. The unfortunate part is that they did obviously play Squirrel for Amphibious. But they did play Crack. This this came out. They played Rune Mage. 6 by 2 9 here, 7 here. Like, a lot of provisions are spent. So I think we just have to deal with the things that, the way they are and just kind of hope for the best. Let's put this... Okay. I think uh, Pride goes back... Tower is not great either, but we kind of need we need sieges. We'll put this back. A beautiful pair of legs, I feel like this is the right thing to do. If they pass on that, they get their card back. If not, then we're fine. They play in. Color would be sweet, but... How do I do this? Um, this is actually not enough. So on a pass, we, we still lose out with that. I think we have to play like in such a way where we're wasting two charges to stay ahead. It's because I, I value card advantage in this matchup. I think it's important. And we give it crew anyways, so then it, it starts playing, and they start playing around it, so it kind of works. We'll just hit it with this. The two boost here. I think that was the right play to make. If they go wide of the damage, it hurts, but at the same time, I think we could maybe wipe their board. Really? If they're deciding, it's either the Fakusha play or it's the Renfrey play. And I think it's probably the Renfrey play. But then they they had their leader and so they got upset and forfeited. Any last words? So this one's probably going to be either Mill or hyper thin and I don't know I feel like Mill's making a bit of a comeback so hyper thin's probably the stronger deck Mill's probably what it is we'll see I don't want to put too many things that thin then just in case in round one might regret it later but we'll put that back for now Put that back for now because we're going first. We don't want scenario gone. 
I think I still want Amphibious. We'll put back Reinforcements because we don't have a target yet. I guess we'll just see what happens. If it's Hyper Thin, it's Renfrey Hyper Thin. Okay, Mill has Nausicaa. I just know that's a lot of points. Yeah. Your attention, please. Maybe it's Renfrey Mill, actually. Okay, so... I'm going to take... We gotta play something, though. I need an engine out there. How many winches? I got two winches in hand. I think it's Carabalista. Okay, Vile. Maybe it's Golden Necker Mill. Which, in that event, it might be good to take the muzzle on the roach. Goes up to six. We get vitality for free two turns. It gets a big, like, tempo swing. We could look for a pass much sooner. Unicorn goes down. Where do they get Radovid? Okay. Maybe that's actually... The muzzle. Uh, I'm just going to boost it. Just because I want to get out of the rounds. It's an expensive play for them. Like 13 and 10 provisions to help us a little bit here. I'm just so glad it's not rent free at this point. Do we have room if they play leader? We should. Yeah. Unless they get impeccable draws, like all three, then it's tough. But we're at five cards, so I don't know if we mind. Seven. Snowdrops, it could be a heat wave, but I feel like we're gonna need a late game heat wave. Let's just, um, let's just pass. That's a huge spend for them early on, right? It's not Golden Necker either. I don't even think it's Mill. I think at this point it's like a Hyper Thin with a bit of um, Renfrey Tech. That's all. What would I even... Okay, I don't think we care. Like, maybe... Ah, really? Squirrel doesn't make a lot of sense. I think that they're going to play in. Winch goes tall, which is kind of scary if they have Vilgefurts. Like, I'm expecting that. I think I'm going to put that back too. This works quite well, because over a long round, this gets huge, right? So we'll just go and lock that. I can make a big difference actually. One and two. Take last amphibious. It goes for like that. Yeah. It saves me time from having to play scenario. That's nice. We take the John at the winch. Okay.
At least we get it out of the way. It's annoying though. Let's play this. Just keep ahead. Like, they get the scenario they're looking for, but I think it's fine, because round one they spend so much. I'm hoping that they pass. Like, if I have to go and play Henselt, kind of expensive. They milled the reinforcements, which would have been the take here. But it looks like we have to go all in. It looks like they're setting up for the perfect hyperthin type situation. Golem and all. Nazca. That's kind of a risky take. I'll show you. Like, we'll hit for the most possible damage. Right? Gotta decide here. I think I'm gonna take this. If I can prevent like myself from having to spend scenario or um, Henselt this round, it's probably for the best. Let's take care of that because I know it's gonna boost. And then I still have John into like a winch. both have resupply here <sighs> this goes less tall you know yeah that's what we'll do maybe maybe I take one more I get rid of that and then we try to hero pass for the win Any experienced player, like really experienced player, wouldn't play anymore. Uncomfortable, annoying bleed, but we got it done. And we saved what I think matters most. There is maybe, maybe a time where we could have saved that leader charge, but I think it's fine. that back it's 50 50 on the split like we have to just keep everything we have here we'll go um hence out first take that get the crew right away we play down to like nothing here it's crazy we thinned harder than the the hyper thin but then again they helped us thin they played um vilg and they played this and that. Yeah, they helped us three times. Cantarella, they have nothing left. Um, well, I think we just take it anyways. Damage is good. We'll get the most Hensel value possible. I like the fact that they're not thinned down all the way. If that's the plan, if that's what they're trying to do, then they might not get the pulls they're looking for. We have to keep them small with units. We can't let them go too wide. Stockpile. Uh, that defeats the purpose. Now I'm kind of worried about it. Actually, they're, they're able to sort of fix their play. That's like the perfect thing for them to pull. We don't want that. That's bad. Here. Uh, 
Um, just in case, actually, we'll take this now. So far, it's looking promising, but it's we're not done yet. Okay, that sucks. It is mill, but they just didn't draw a lot of the milling cards. Oddly enough. Um, they have to play beside something, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, we just remove the spying off that. Nothing else to really do here. Golem from hand sucks. Yeah, you see, they couldn't get it... Couldn't get it done just yet. We'll just, uh... It sucks, because that's the heat wave, but it's also, like, my target. Whatever. I guess we just take the two. So next up here, it looks like we got Renfree hand buff. Yeah. I'm willing to bet at this point. Okay. At least we don't go first. They're going to spend a lot in round one, probably push round two. I need to have Tall Punish for later. Lock's kind of good here. I don't think we need Squirrel. It's good that we found Siege. I don't think we take a Mulligan on it just because I want to have it for later. Bombardment with not a lot going on is tough, but we could probably get another Siege Engine. I think Envoy goes back just because we have good thinning. Boost 3, 2 armor. That's going to be for the Torque. They're just going to go all in, in with it on this turn. Default everything. Maybe they just imported the deck. Let's take the engine first. Because I feel like we'd be missing points otherwise, right? Let's go and do that. Yeah, play two engines and just try and get like a bunch of specials played. Because they're going to take cheap thinning. There might even be an option where I take full test pride round one. Because they take the thinning. Like Renfrey's gang, all that. You know, they're going to go pretty wide, I would imagine. We'll see. Watch and learn. It's kind of annoying. We don't need crew for these either, so we'll just keep them like that. I want to set up a crew pocket for pride here. It's Maybe Actually, the one winch. Maybe we could save Pride here. Let's just take this because it's huge points, and then take one of the Karos. And then crew pocket for the Karo. We take the winch and all that off that. We should just be all right. I think that. They they probably have like an Igni in this deck though. They usually do. Is that a lock? Nah, let's just wait. Twenty-two. We have armor on one of our units. I don't think we care too much about that. Let's sink it for real points.
Okay, keeps us ahead. I wish I had power at this point, but we don't. I mean, decent little carryover, it's fine. I don't know. Kind of want to win on even, guys. Like, we we still can, but I feel like if I don't play this now, we're wasting opportunity. Feels like a decent lock. Twelve, fifteen, seventeen. We're we're playing it safe for the whole Igni play. Next turn, okay. I think I take one leader charge, and that's it. I can't afford to spend any more, but I also can't afford to lose this opportunity. So we'll take it like that, just so we're up by about eight. If they continue to play, it's a different story, though. Forty-one. Yeah, let's take this here. I think it's just worth it. Just in case. And... It's probably Igni Torque. I'm willing to lose to the Igni. Okay, it's the, literally the Torque. It's probably the best heat wave we're gonna get. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't take it. That's fine. <laughs> What's in hand? If they didn't play it, it's probably the Renfrey, but they probably already knew like it's not gonna happen. Okay. One, two, maybe this goes. We still got push for later. I think we're supposed to bleed out the best play. They could have skags in hand too. That's tough. At least we get them to trade down with the trade. Yeah. We just take it at this point. Tallest knocks that out of the way, no barricade, right? And then we can take, we'll take that because it's better for this to come back next turn, I guess. Take that now. We're not going to get it though. It'll come back down fine. We take the one and two, re we reuse that. Renfrey is too big. They're probably looking for like a carryover play. Yeah, it's stratagem. Whenever you pass boost lowest. Renfrey's probably the last card they had in hand. It's boosted quite a bit. No hand buffs happen in this round, so I'm willing to play it down, actually. I think we're supposed to. Take this and just finish the job. I'm going to put it on melee just in case 
I don't want to play around, uh, like, I want to play around an Igni. Here. There's that. I don't want to mess anything up at all. And then... This is a couple points. It's all in, right? 24 points. They get 10 off that. Igni plays for nothing. 10. And then the... F oh. That's true. 8 plus the 5, we win. 2-0. Oh, yeah, because they can't take hits. So that's right. So we got Nilfgaard here. Double cross. I'm expecting one of two things, right? We got Mill. We got uh, Mill, and we got uh, double run free. So. We'll find out soon. It's not letting me play. Oh, there we go. We're going first. I don't think I have time to play Envoy. Kind of like these in round one. I, I think before I put one back, but then we started spending things we didn't really want to spend. Let's take these two. We can keep an engine. I would expect that they have a lot of locks, so I don't want to play too many of my engines early. I want to take locks on these, you know? This looks like the play. What else would I lock? A Nausicaa? Okay, let's just keep it the way it is. Maybe an assimilate engine. Okay, good. That's actually a perfect card to pull. Yeah, we expect the Nazca. Honestly, it's one of those things that if left unchecked, they get to like 10 points. I don't want to spend a lock, but there isn't really much else that I would want to lock. Unless they copy one of my siege engines later. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's also annoying. I don't know if it's worth a muzzle, though. Let's just get the second engine up. We can set... Uh, it doesn't really matter. They could lock... They can lock Radovid, but at the same time... Okay, I'll play into Tall Punish, but I'll play around a lock. I think that the leader charges, they, they really equate to quite a lot. I hope it's nothing valuable. Uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Nothing. They might have a squirrel. I don't know. I think we do take a thin anyways. Otherwise, we're just not drawing cards, you know?
Torn Freeze Gang. A pleasure to bleed you. Deciding tells me they're using leader. If they use leader here, that'd be so good. Yeah, if they're using leader, it's actually the wrong time to use leader. Because five cards, like I still can pass. That's really good. That's like actually what I'm afraid of. They could have got scenario later, like And if they took this, it was probably this, this, or this, and they missed these two. Because otherwise, you'd take those every day. Let's just uh, give them the round at this point. Here. We got a tall punish out of the way. We got some provisions out of the way. Obviously, they have some left. Terra Nova being set up with this. Peller might actually be useful here. We know they're going to push in round two. I might actually play Siege round two. Let's not go too tall. Phibius plays into, honestly, one choice at this point, so we got to be careful with that. I think this goes back for now. <laughs> we just don't have a lot left in round three, do we? That's probably my muzzle. couple things if they play in it sucks but I think I'm putting this down just in case they don't play in because I don't want to dump scenario then they pass on that that's horrible okay one and two we this is like this is where we play this because if they pass, we get up by one. Yeah? They've already thinned out Knickers, so we don't have to worry about that all working and going wrong. My stick my nose where it doesn't um, hit this. Okay. Play another one here. They're just like, forget about card advantage doesn't mean a thing. There's the run free, destroy 10 and under, do 8 excess damage, watch, it's going to be something nuts. Okay, 7. We have to heat wave the run free. Whenever you pass boost, lowest K. That's not bad, that's not horrible. We got to take this now. Kind of a horrible heat wave, but we can always squirrel it too. That's your pass. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna heat wave this quickly, and then we we just get out. We still have the space to do it. I'm down a card, which feels horrible, but... Okay. Let's put that back. And actually, put that back too. If I could set up quick, we should be fine. We'll see. Like, they're not putting the Renfrey back anymore. They might put Vilgefortz back, which is really annoying, but... And we'll, we'll take that so we have crew. Okay, lock's annoying, but it is what it is. Um, let's go take this now. I 
We gotta be careful though. We'll we'll go and make another copy. They're gonna take another lock, aren't they? How many more do you have? Watch them roll another lock. Guess they take the fin. I don't think they took the second one. I Quite okay, let's focus on the engine first. Here. Um, yeah. Let's take all our leader here and remove that stupid thing. I'm just worried about them putting it back in the deck and getting it again, but if they do all that, then we just lose anyways. And the problem is, like, they have other stuff that would be bad. I shall do as you yeah, so they do take that, but it's better almost maybe than they take they take that than they take the um, the Vilgaforts. We can just remove that. Pretty comfortable lead. They'll go and play it right now, I'm sure. But they still have to get it from deck. So Roderick or something comes down. Yeah. Roderick comes down. They get 11, 11 points with the Assimilate. They take the lock on the... Okay. We just take the boost and hope for the best. 12 points. They get 5. Plus whatever else. Yeah, it's Brathens into one of these. It's kind of a lot. They win by about 10 points. Okay, we've got another tactical decision deck. And now we don't have to go first, so we can really push them, hopefully. Okay, full test pride. I don't know if it's mill yet. If it's, if it's mill, we want to hold on to this card, right? I don't think I keep squirrel. A little bit slow. I don't love two of these, but I also don't really know if I need peller. Muzzle could be effective. There's a lot of stuff I want that I don't have. However, we don't have any of the thinning stuff. So these two... The Hensel, the Amphibious, like all these things are just out of the way. And it looks like that's exactly what it is. We can't even damage that. We could damage it, but we can't remove it. That's fine. We'll take a carryover play. What's with all the mill? That's probably Kingslayer. Yeah. Here's our chance. So be it. Ah, it's no good. Set the power to one. I like how it's already one. That feels like a pretty good lock to me. But we can also kill it. I think I'm just going to take this. Look. Let's get that two in the one. Two more. So then we can play Junk. Because I, I want to remove this now. Like the, the Vigo. 
because I imagine that they're going to take a Vilgefortz on it. Just get a comfortable lead before they go and take it out. I don't mind that. We can keep a couple extra leader charges for later. It's got resupply, which is nice. It'll be at one. We play bombardment. We get that. Or it'll just be there. We take that. We take winch. I don't have winch. Okay. At least they have crew set up for siege towers. We could start putting those in. We got two pockets here. I guess that's fine. Whatever. I'll leave it. I'll let it go naturally. And if they do play Snowdrop, we'll just take the Heat Wave on that. That's what I'm talking about. See, I was worried about that. Sure. I guess we just use these for now. We have to 2 0. It's looking like it. Okay, two siege engines. Let's make it a third. Caraballista gets armor. Actually, Caraballista plays for more, more, like more points throughout the round. I don't want to play into like an Igni or a Yurden or anything like that. I think we take it on damage. The only thing we got to be careful about is having enough siege engines to proc the scenario. We've got two left in deck. Let's go. Just take that, I guess. Take that. I might be able to pass on them. Depends. That's a lot, you know what I mean? Huge point difference. It's, yeah, okay, there we go. All I need is one Siege, and we could 2-0. In fact, Amphibious, John Amphibious, I'm even happy to help them thin at this point, because we have the hand. It's like a round three hand. What I'll do is I'll put... I'll put... Mm, That's better, just in case. And that almost made me pass. Like, when I played this and clicked this quickly, you gotta be careful for that. They're gonna have a lot of points this round, but at least it's, like, stuck into one... They might be able to remove that engine, though. Yeah, the two, the four, there it goes. I don't know. If they're already up by 24 points, do I just let them do it? 28 points, you know? Because I could save that and just come back and get some of these things later. Might be kind of good. Twenty eight. Would they even mill down though? That's the thing. I think I'm just going to pass. It's It seems really weird to do that. But like, what, what are they going to do? Go down two or three cards to try and get it back later? And like, it seems fine to me. 
I just get rid of one of my tutors and take it first. Okay. Envoy can go. And... We got winch in deck. Okay, we'll put... We'll put that back. Ah. We ruined it. That's their chance at card advantage. Look, I don't need... It's 50-50 on the mill. John plays for two already. I don't want things to get worse. We'll take Amphibious as soon as possible though. Hopefully they play the Envoy. Good. That's fine. I think it just works out for us. Caravalista. They spent Vilg. If they have Renew, they can go and take that Renew, which sucks for us. But let's try and get some value out of this first. Xavier, I guess that's like the tallest card they have. I never tested this interaction. I guess it doesn't work at all because we just don't have any. <laughs> Siri Nova. I totally missed that play. So this could be Golden Necker, actually. Literally wasn't expecting that at all. Let's get these engines down quickly then. Golden Necker Mill probably has Mata as well. So they do get back a card. Okay, random red haze. Let's try and play around one, but I don't think we can play around a second. That's such a weird tech. Here's our chance. Okay, I guess that plays for nothing here. Do one, just so that they don't top deck better. I guess at this point we just hit. We'll take the two, because it's all we have for engines. It's not getting any better. We'll just kill that off. Yeah, I think we're good from here. Too bad I didn't wait. Tibor is kind of an expensive one. I forgot about that for a second. Here. We don't have to worry about Renew anymore. I think it's just the one... The one Vilgaforce they have. Okay, well... So much for my play. Just, uh, we played John in at two. Has yet to speak its last. <laughs> That's the Carabalista. They get five points. 
We just, uh, we win the game. Let's boost something short. They don't actually get to play the cards, so... Like the order of it. 